was a V6 twin turbo, right? Three and a half liter. And what's it doing for horsepower? Hold on. They tell me this soul with a moped, I got a punch. Hey, my name is Adam Carolla. You may know me as a podcaster, comedian, TV host, author, but my main passion in life is cars. Vintage race cars and vintage racing. So I decided to take a trip to jolly old England and attend the 2016 Goodwood Festival of Speed. You'll get to ride shotgun with me as I roll through the sights and sounds of vintage cars. And most importantly, I'm gonna be racing my vintage Hull Newman Trans Am race car in the hill climb. So let's get to it. Marino Franchitti, good to see you, my friend. How are you, Adam? Good to see you. So what we have is sort of the evolution. We got the Mark IV here. This is the car with the bubble and the, where they invented the champagne spray and everything. This came from the unloved J car, you know, the bread van, and uh, right. they turned it into this, for me, the most beautiful of the, the Ford GTs of that era. This is the first time I've actually been able to get close to it. The Henry Ford guys let me sit in it today, and it was, a, man, it was an emotional moment. Phil Remington that did the bubble for Dan Gurney out of a road sign originally. He went into the Ford wind tunnel in Detroit with the unloved J car and him right. and a couple of the Ford engineers just spent a few days trying stuff and he right. dead eyed it and this beautiful car is what they en ended up with and turned a car that was looking not right. so competitive to a car that just went to France and absolutely thrashed the competition. It doesn't run anymore, it's so original but Oh really? You know, you know Dan's a, a good buddy. Wait a minute, that's Dan, like me. Just special. Yeah. I'm so original, I don't run anymore. <laughs> this this right. one behind us is in golf livery, obviously. This is a first generation. This is what people think of when they think about the GT40. Yeah, this is the most iconic of all of them. This one has a lot of 60s swoop in it, and this one's got a little more sharp edge fighter jet, you know, yeah. as we head to the 70s. Yeah. And this one had probably a lot more wind tunnel, and this probably had a lot more clay, you know. So uh, Ford, Ford's back in a big way. We yeah, got the uh, GT1 Le Mans. It was incredible. As team efforts go, it was outstanding on our, on our 67 car. And, you know, I wanted to be in the 67 because of Dan and sure. this car. The cars ran strong throughout, and it was seeing Ferrari and Ford going at it. Hard for, for 24 hours was uh, was very special. It's nice. It's it's like um, uh, you guys don't play real football where you're from, but no, these are people. you know I don't like it when a couple expansion teams gets together for the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? <laughs> you want the Giants and the Patriots. You want Ford. You want Ferrari. It was the Giants going at it again. It was just so incredible to to be a part of. This is our new Ford GT. Let's go and have a uh, yeah. Let's should look at that. Let's one. have a little look at this thing. As they say, aero is everything. This car, every single little part of it has been tuned in the wind tunnel. And it was made especially by Ford for Le Mans. Mm -hmm. And that showed, when we got out on the track at Le Mans, I've never had a better balanced or nicer car to drive. It was an absolute joy. So it's a V6 twin turbo, right? Three and a half liter. And what's it doing for horsepower? Hold on. They tell me, this asshole with a moped, I got a punch. <laughs> Sorry. They, they tell me, around 500. What could this thing get up to on the Molson straight if it didn't have a chicane in it? Uh, I mean, we're still accelerating. We were over 180 at Le Mans. If they allowed us a little more juice, you know, sky's the limit. Did they add weight to it? Did they yes. prevent intake or what did, what did they do for they, parity? Well, they control the, with the normally aspirated cars, it's intake, so they have restrictors on them. But, I mean, you look inside, we have. Yeah, let's look inside. Yeah. Oh, you know, you go from man. the 4GT where we have no switches to this thing. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. a little bit going on there. Wow. So uh, you're controlling the boost yep. from from the steering wheel. God, you have to become an astronaut now, right? <laughs> like what? you used to just do a shot of gin and just jump in a car and pull on your leather helmet and go like <laughs> hell. But I mean, like you, you got to do a lot of, you, you got to be a pilot in this thing. I mean, you have to be a driver and a pilot, right? You do, but the good thing is, is I mean, we have very little on the dash here because they have live telemetry. They right. know what's happening before we do. They're like, you got a puncture? I'm like, I do. And then you feel it. It's... And they're like, stop picking your nose. Yeah. And they're like, hey, 
two, you know, the two separate types of TC. So you have your control, so the car knows when it's sideways, right. and then you just have wheel speed. So it's actually pretty straightforward once you get used to it. Your your shifts are about an hour in the car. Yeah, around right about an hour. I did a triple in the middle of the night at Le Mans, so I was in there for three. It's actually just over three. It was about five thirty when I got out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What do you think the difference between doing a long shift in the middle of the night in this car and doing one in? the Gurney Foyt car. I've talked about this with Dan and a few other guys that raced in that period. We've decided they're equally as difficult but in different ways. So now we're obviously very strapped in the car, a lot more force from the downforce of the mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. So the slick tires, a lot more grip. Uh, so physically, it's difficult that way. If I pull the paddle, if I'm going down the straight and I pull the paddle to downshift, it will not do it. Whereas those guys were looking after the brakes, they were looking after the gearbox, not over revving making sure the oil pressure, every all the temperatures are okay. I don't have to really worry about any of that. You go down the mill sign and if you jumped on the brake, you would heat shot the brake and they would explode. So they had to kind of ease into it gently right. to gently heat the brakes up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we test this car over 24 hours and when we race it, we race it as hard as we can for 24. There's no looking after this or that. So, you know, on one hand, you have more amenities. Yeah. On the other hand, they couldn't drive these things hard for no. 24 hours or they would break. You have to drive this car hard for 24 hours to be competitive because everyone behind you is driving hard. Although the one advantage you guys do get is in headlights. I always think those headlights <laughs> from the 60s in the middle of the night, especially if it's raining, I don't know if they got 20 feet out in front of that car. In those days, there was no barriers, there was trees. There was sandbanks, there was, yeah. you know, it was, a, it was a life or death thing every single lap. I mean, also, we're like 180 around top speed now. You imagine doing over 220 with that. Obviously, the faster you go and the less the lights are doing. Right, so. right. They had to baby those cars and you have to flog these cars. Yeah, you do. Three in the morning, like I was, you've been in there for a couple hours already. You've been up for 30 hours, you're tired. I'm just pulling the paddle. They get that shift wrong, buzz the thing, race is over. And everybody back in Video Village knows what happened. Oh yeah. Because back in the day, these guys could over rev it or grab the wrong gear and they go, clutch gave out. But you can't pull any of that BS in this thing because there's a guy who has it on his computer, I can't do right? anything. I can't do anything. They know, when I, as you say earlier, if I pick my nose, they know it. I like it. <laughs> we should get a beer. We're going to get a beer. Let's get that beer. Thanks, brother. Thank you, Adam. Let's do it. <laughs>